Thomas's machine in the output flange of my gearbox because the adapter plate for the quattro box arrived today and lo and behold it's not made correctly and doesn't fit but this is why I didn't want to fit the gearbox back to the car before I fitted this adapter because I have no faith in any of this stuff being correct and I was right Well, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? It's one of them we'll have to just go and have a look. It's not much, so that's probably fine. Yeah. Let's have a look. Thank you very much. Let's go and try. Oops. Do, 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 do. Yeah, this is the adapter plate and you see the dirty marks there because that's where it was hitting. Hopefully, it won't any longer. Well, it turns out the fitment of these adapter plates are even shitter than it first seemed. We first tried to get the seal in and it's too small. Luckily, I've got two. But this one, I got it in by hammering the shit out of it. So it's literally self-clearanced itself. It's not good. It'd probably work, but that's shit. So really this needs half a mil taken out. But it's not just that. The where it sits is too high. So while it, this is fine with no seal, it's too high so it rubs against air again with a seal. So it's basically shite. So <laughs> got a machine this to be lower, this to be wider. And obviously this was just to clear that. So overall, fucking rubbish i know they're uh, not expensive but they're also utterly shite as if this creation motorsport adapter plate couldn't get any more fucking shit after all the machining it needed to make it deeper and wider on the seal and aaron to machine the cup doesn't even clear the fucking block look hits the block there so it won't line up properly so we're going to have to shave a little bit off either the block or the uh, plate because it's fucking junk. Right, I, I think you're being pessimistic. I think it's a good kit, it's a good plate. Does it fit? Yes, unless you don't have a lathe. Yeah, yeah. Basically, if you've got a lathe, it's lovely. But if you've got a lathe, you might have just made one yourself. You have to machine, you have to angle ground the, your block a little. Oh, it fits. <laughs> it fits. It fits in some way. Oh, the seal fits as well if you machine it. Yeah. The depth of the seal fits if you machine it down as well. And the and cup fits. The output shaft fits if you machine it. The shaft it. fits if you machine it down as well. <laughs> so basically, nothing fits. And of course, the um, the standard uh, splash plate thing won't fit anymore. So you have to cut a bit off and remove the rubber bit. So you got your flywheel on show. But whatever. Um, it's basically shit. It's a bit of a bullshit, is it? That's it is it fucking is. dog shit. There you go. Now we're learning, well, we're learning not to buy anything because it's all crap. How to make one of those bullshit plates work. Fucking angle by your block. If anyone remembers while back when I put this new engine in, I fitted this poly rear engine mount, well front engine mount, sorry, to help reduce wheel hop. And it didn't at all. In fact, my wheel hop was maybe as bad as ever. And now putting it back on, you know, the mounts all back on this time, I realized why. If you look, this is the original hole. This is an original mount, an original bolt. This M10. This fucking wizard sleeve M14. What a what a fucking piss take. And this is a brand new part from a Toyota specialist. Fuck sake! I didn't realise the first time because I had the mount attached to it, so I just put the bolt through. 
but it turns out with the mount not on so I can see what this is a fucking mess so this was probably worse than standard this will add wheel hop and broke the fucking drive shaft again should be like this well really I should send it back to the bloke to get it fixed we're taking the other route which is drilling the mount right out to M14 which is a fucking nightmare because that's stainless steel and that does not want to cut but otherwise I'm going to be waiting another week or so because of another tuner's fuck up this whole car is just a fucking disaster zone of everything you rely on for another company it's dog shit yeah it's a nightmare so this is gonna make that M14. So as long as we find M14 bolt long enough, we're good. This is taking the water to the next level. <laughs> I'm fixing my wounds even if they're all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're repairing perfectly good mounts by having to modify them to fix someone else's fuck up. Thing is, right? Even if I said to him, yeah, this is wrong, you know what I do? I'll send it back and we'll fix it and send it you back. So it won't even be like a week waiting for them. Wow. It'll probably be fucking two weeks because of the postage and shit. It's not like he'll just post me another eye back because that's what these people are like. So yeah. No, bit, it's not. Bit gutted about that. Back is not, no. You know who this is. Your missus mm -hmm. complaining why you're still here so late when you should be at home. Yeah. Yes. I think I better not answer that. I didn't hear it. No, I didn't hear it. Was, you didn't hear it because you was on your way. Yeah, yeah, no, I was, yeah. I was on my own at least. I yeah. was just on the way home. Yeah. <sighs> Good thing she doesn't watch these videos. I was going to say. <laughs> Thank God the viewer. The yeah. only one yeah. she's going to watch. Yeah, I'm going to say. Good job nobody watches my fucking videos because uh, <laughs> otherwise you'd be in trouble. <laughs> oh. Someone is going to be there is like, hmm. Mm, I'm going to grass them up. Yeah. Thomas is me, sis. Yeah. It's like, Good morning. I just wanted to forward you this little video. Actually, this small clip. <laughs> this small clip, yeah. <laughs> they're sending you at the, the right timestamp and all that shit, aren't they? Just to be a fucking grass. <laughs> <laughs> Job done. Thank you very much. That shows the difference between the correct size hole and the hole this aftermarket outrated one's got. M14 should be M10. Fucking piss take. Thankfully, Thomas has drilled out, drilled out his own mount to M14, and I found an M14 nut and bolt, and I can reuse it. But that almost certainly costs me. Oh shit! And it not only cost me broken drive shafts, but it cost me that engine mount snapping too. No wonder it wheel hopped and broke that. Because the fucking, you know, it broke the gear, the lug off the gearbox. It was because basically the thing, the only other thing that was meant to be holding it in place, this, was flapping about like a fucking wizard sleeve. Fuck's sake. Fucking hell with cars, man. You literally like anything you buy aftermarket is just fucking shit nearly all the time unbelievable i just thought out of like common courtesy i would let the company who well, are the bloke i think it's just a one-man band who made that bush wrong let him know that it was wrong so next time he can put the right size sleeve in it and rather than like just being like all right sam cheers thanks for letting me know even though you know really you should get your fucking money back he just went on this long ass fucking rant about how it's fine. Oh yeah, it makes no difference that the hole's bigger. If you do the bolt up tight, it can't move anyway. Fucking bullshit. Just kept repeating, oh 800 brake cars, drag cars. And all this. It's like, fuck off do you with this. It's like, if you do, it's a different car to this. It's not fucking, it's not one of these. You keep kept on about Celicas and fucking shit. And he's like, oh yeah, standard Celica ones, the bolt holes are way bigger than the bolts and all that stuff, and it's fine, blah, 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 uh, maybe you launched it wrong. So, and then to do a launch, and it was wheel hop, it killed it, you fucking prick. 
And yeah, he really, like, I wasn't even gonna... Yeah, I thought, well, I'll let him know. But instead, he fucking tries to, like, make out like it's fine and normal. Anyone who understands, he, he literally said, if that bolt is done up tight, it couldn't move. You're telling me an M10 bolt in an M14 sleeve with all the fucking twist and torque of an engine would not move it around? Fuck off, you fucking idiot. Of course it fucking would. That's basically saying we don't need to worry about bolt hole sizes. Just put fucking anything in anything. As long as it bloody, as long as the bolt's small enough, just put it in the biggest hole you fucking like. And yeah, it'd be just a structural. No, it isn't, you fucking dick. That's like, yeah, yeah let's, let's put all of these, uh, all the bushes have the wrong size fucking things in it and stuff, is it? You know, Toyota were wrong by putting that in. They should have just put a massive one in so because it doesn't matter. Fucking prick. And this guy's building your suspension. Building your mounts. Building your whatever. And this is a tuner. A fucking expert. What a load of bollocks. Cunts. Honestly, I really fucking hate most tuners. Full of absolute shit. This is BRD. Brooks Racing Developments. Fucking God help you. What would you literally imagine? You had some suspension and the sleeve was fucking way too big for your bolt. You really think that's not going to rattle around like a cunt just because you've done the bolt up tight? Fuck's sake. Fucking full of shit. <sighs> Wangers. Absolute cunts. But despite all that shit, the car's back together. Gearbox is in, gear linkage is on. All that's left is to put the two boost pipes on and bleed the clutch. I'm going to bleed the clutch first before the boost pipes because they would be in the way otherwise. Not looking forward to bleeding the clutch because it was an absolute cunt last time for some reason. Don't know why. It's just, I think it's just the length of the car. You've got the master cylinder down there. The clutch there, it takes a lot of bleeding. Even though last time I did it, you know, with pressure, I reverse bleeded it with pressure. And it seemed to be fucking worse, if not better. I don't even know. <laughs> I think I do it the conventional way this time. But apart from that, I think it's good to go. I actually, as soon as the wheels were off, I decided to drain the catch tank to see what was in there. And to be honest, it was moisture and it spelt. And it smelled a bit fuely, which, to be honest, seen as a lot of this car's early running was trying to get the fuel in right and it being a bit rich, to say the least. I would say, yeah, pretty good. There was no oil, no oil came out or anything. So yeah, um, I've not put the drive shafts back in because Thomas wants to test and make sure his fancy new ones really do fit. Because obviously he's, the one set, you know, the company's done for him to his measurements. But you still got to double check because, wow, despite that being a good company, I thought the two, you know, I thought the engine mount people and the uh, transmission adapter people were good companies. And that shit don't fit neither. So it's always worth checking. Apart from that, the actual engine going back in went relatively smoothly the only things that took time was for some reason the pipe that goes to the clutch slave cylinder i don't know what i was doing wrong it's my fault i think but for some reason i don't know why it just wasn't going all the way in so that took a lot of wiggling about and fucking about longer than i thought and it took me ages to get gear linkage mount back on mostly because I couldn't figure out a good way of doing it. I could do it, but it was all the ways were awkward. And then right near the end, I found a good way of doing it, and this actually was easy. These cars have got fucking no steering angle. Like, front wheel drive cars have often got more steering angle than this. That is full lock. No joke, full lock. MX-5s haven't got much lock, but these MR2s are even worse. They probably wouldn't have the reputation for spinning out so bad if uh, they had more than like two degrees of fucking lock. It's crazy. I honestly think it's because, and I don't know for sure, 
but I got a feeling most of the front suspension is derived from the front wheel drive tires. I know like the lower arms are basically Yaris ones and so on. I wonder if the rack's a front wheel drive one. So it was intended to never have much lock because there was never, you know, any need to in a front wheel drive application. But in this, some more lock would be nice, especially seeing as for the other one, I want to do some drift days in it just to be like, take the piss because people think you can't drift a mid-engine car, which is bullshit. Weirdly, it's not hitting any lock stops. Nothing, and it's nowhere near the limit of uh, room before you'd have to modify the arches. You could have loads more lock before it rubbed on anything. But yeah, there's no external lock stops. It must be, it's just getting to the end of the limit inside the rack, which is very unusual. But exactly what the deal is inside the rack, I'm yet to find out. Annoyingly, the first thing I thought of was, wonder if we can easily modify the hubs because on some cars like Subarus and um, Lexus, um, you know, like Sauras, so Toyota, uh, whatever they're called, there's enough meat further in on the hub to drill a new hole and move the tie rod in, which effectively is a very easy way of giving you a load more lock, but there is absolutely no room on this. And on other cars, you can cut and weld the hubs to, you know, for that bit to be shorter, the same. But again, it would take quite a lot of uh, work to do on this. Probably the easiest way of getting more lock, apart from maybe there's some internal lock stops, is probably some different inner tie rods get more lock. But I wouldn't mind some more, you know, for the other car, for this I don't really care. But for the other car, for like drift days and shit, a little bit more than this. This is just ridiculous. It's like, this is, that's just basically no lock at all. It's crazy. So, you know, although you don't need fucking loads of lock, like some of these dickheads do, start fitting wise fab to cars and they can barely even fucking drift. A little bit more than that is like kind of handy. So yeah, weird. This is probably the rear wheel drive car with the least lock I've ever seen. Right, I think with this car being basically back together, it's a good time to end this video. Otherwise it'd just be super long and yeah, you won't have another video so soon. So yeah, hope you liked what you've seen. And as you can see, it's gonna be back in action very soon. And uh, yeah, like, subscribe, comment. I'll tell you what, I'm less than 200 away from 10,000 subs now. So if anyone's watching this and haven't already subscribed, subscribe or tell some other people to subscribe. I want to see 10,000. It don't really make any difference because I'm making like not even 40 quid a month at the moment from YouTube. So it's not like it's making me any money. 10,000 in YouTube terms is nothing, but that's a like a big sort of, what do you call it? Grand, not a groundbreaking number, but you know, it's a big number. It's a big turn. Oh, I don't even know what the term is. You know what I mean. 10,000 is a big number. So yeah. Anyway, hope you liked it. Uh, if anyone wants to help out with my Patreon, like, you know, chuck a few quid or whatever, you're more than welcome to do that. I'll put the Patreon in the description as well. And yeah next video will be soon and it will probably be partly at least about this car because i've got ideas and plans so yeah see you later